stream is about to begin. That's live on YouTube. So that's it. <coughs> good evening, everyone. Good evening, Ashok. Good evening, Atul uh, Bhai. Good to see you again. Yeah, great to have you on the show, Ashok. Welcome. Really Thanks, appreciate your taking out time and sharing some thoughts with our audience. And we've got a full audience here. Parth Yadav is also here. He's in class eight. Ah, and okay. he attends all my webinars and sessions and he's doing a course with me as well. Yeah, good evening, Parth, and good evening, everybody in the audience. Good evening. So, Bye. Farooq Siraj is also there. Hi, Farooq. So good to have you here. Anyway, Farooq Bhai, good. Farooq Bhai is here. <laughs> good to see you. So great, Pandit. wonderful. And wonderful. later on, Farooq, I would be making you a panelist and you can directly ask questions. So, should we begin, Ashok? Yeah, sure. All right. So welcome to another edition of that slide. Ladies and gentlemen, I have with me today my friend, Mr. M.S. Ashok. M.S. Ashok is from Bangalore. Ashok is an engineering professional with rich experience of being an engineer. So he's worked as an engineer. Now I'm also an engineering professional, but I've not worked much as an engineer. <laughs> so let me start by asking Ashok about his time in Jamshedpur, where we spent our childhood together. We were in the same school. So Ashok, could you tell me about a couple of influences during your childhood, which have had a telling impact on your entire life. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Atul. Thank you for having me on the show. I have been following this uh, conversation uh, which you have been having over the last couple of weekends. And uh, it has been very interesting. You host it very well. And I'm quite certain that your the student community which listens in, uh, you know, gains some insights from some of us uh, from our experiences. Um, thank you, Ashok. Uh, yes, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Adul and I uh, go back uh, 45, what, what's it, 60? <laughs> and it, it's very no, no, long, no. long time, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Better not mention it. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, yeah, we, since we all studied at Loyola High School, um, it's always, all of us always, I think, uh, Keep reminding ourselves that if something was the best thing that happened in life for us was the fact that we studied at Loyola School. Wonderful. And uh, I think totally that, agree. Uh, that uh, probably also, uh, 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 you know, uh, manifests itself by the fact by, when you take a look at just about every alumni of Loyola, you know, uh, in terms of what uh, he has been doing and how he has journeyed in his life and what he has achieved. Right. Uh, it speaks for itself that, you know, there was something in the uh, alma mater that we have that uh, whoever passed through its portals is actually, uh, uh, you know, has had a very good life. Absolutely. Right? I mean, you know, uh, success can be defined in so many ways. I mean, you could be, succe you could be successful uh, making a hell of a lot of money. You could be successful not making a lot of money, but really doing, enjoying what you like to do. And uh, somewhere along the line, uh, you have a good feeling of uh, fulfillment of what you did. Right? And I think uh, the school uh, does play a very important role. I, over the years that, uh, um, you know, I, I grew up in Jamshedpur almost. I was not born in Jamshedpur. Uh, those days, uh, as you mentioned, we are from Bangalore down south. So my father, my parents are from Bangalore. And uh, it so happened that I was born in Belga. Right. Okay. And, um, and then, uh, of course, my father came to Jamshedpur from Bangalore in 1954. All right. And he was there uh, till he passed away in 1996. 
uh, at some point in time, I had asked him, uh, why is it that you have chosen to be in Jamshedpur all your life? Hmm. He didn't want to go back to Bangalore, incidentally. So uh, we had our house, built our house there, stayed there. And uh, when I asked him that, he said, um, well, think about the life you had and you you can answer that question better yourself. Beautiful. And I think that was true. I, you know, uh, Loyola School, uh, yes, uh, uh, was one of those uh, beautiful times. Uh, as you asked me, what, what kind of things influenced us? Yeah, profound, school. profound influences. Profound influences, I think, was the fact that um, the priests who ran the school, you know, all the Jesuit priests, mm. uh, Father Pa, Father Roberts, Father Love, Father Deneen, you know, the whole, whole yes. range of those uh, uh, wonderful people who, who actually, you know, very selflessly gave and you know, nurtured everybody. Mm. Yeah. Uh, one of the most profound influences I would certainly like to say is with Father uh, Roberts. Mm. Okay, I'll I will give you a, a background to why I meant make that statement. Uh, we were, um, if you recall, um, you know, ninth and tenth was very interestingly it was very interesting for us, um, mm. and. The whole batch was mixed up and then they Correct. did something sections, like... Sections, you know, sections were made. Two, two sections were, three sections were reduced to two sections and, mm. you know, they came up with, I don't know what was the reason, <laughs> but uh, somewhere they said everybody who done very well in maths is in one section. Mm, mm, mm. Right? Um, first term exam, I got zero out of 100. <laughs> Father Graham? Uh, Father Graham. And Father Graham shook his head. And then I think he had a talk with Father Roberts and Father Roberts um, kind of called to me. <laughs> and incidentally, around that time, um, uh, the other influence was uh, the thing called Student Personal Office, right? SPO. You are the boss. Mm -hmm. I was one of the guys along with you. Um, and Father Roberts was in charge, if you remember. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So Father Roberts called me aside and then, you know, in a very uh, interesting fashion, he kind of spoke to me and he asked me, Ashok, what is it that you want to do as you go forward? Mm. Yeah. And I said, uh, you know, by that time, uh, there was this interest in electronics for me. And I said, you know, I want to be in electronics. And he, he looked at me and said, you know what? That's a good idea. Mm. But if you don't work on your math, you're really not going anywhere. Then there's no electronics. And there's no electronics without math. And I looked at him and he, he said, look, I'm uh, let me tell you that you 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 need math all through and through. <laughs> and um, well, I did take him seriously. Um, that was one very the way he put it across to me in terms of you know the question which says what is it that you want to do in life? Yes, and and what you would lose if you didn't have math? Right. What would you lose? I, you know, he, he brought the, a very sharp focus into what I would need to do if, in case I want to achieve something. Yeah, see, that is what right. it means when you make a person look at the consequences. I, I, more than the consequences, I think he kind of pointed the, the direction very correctly. He said, Correct. This is what you want to do. Then yeah, you, if you, you don't take this direction, the consequences are going to be different. Right, you're not going there. So, you know, uh, that was one very strong influence. I, uh, I, I always think back and say, uh, one piece of advice that was given to me was, if you want something, then you've got to do something, you know, correctly. That will take you there. It will take you there. Everything else follows. You know, you single. And of course, I did mention SPO, and I think uh, you'll agree, the student personal office and the manner in which we involved ourselves with school administration was one of a kind experience. And let me say that you, Sandeep Grover, you were the guys who did all the work. <laughs> See, like already talking like the boss. <laughs> I just managed to be there because of you guys. You guys took it upon your shoulders and actually handled the discipline of the entire school and yeah, documented everything so beautifully. Yeah, it was, I think, a, a very interesting... See, mine was more a PR role and, you know, uh, being on the front end. But you, you know, you had both ends, front end as well as back end. And the way you guys worked, I think it was a very successful team. Yeah, we were a successful team. So I, I think the SPO has been a unique experience, um, you know, in school. Uh, I remember when we were in junior school, we were terribly afraid of the SPO. Right. And, and see, when we were in the 10th, 
we also had a 11th standard in school correct and we had to keep them also exactly you know reined in and we also punished them sometimes exactly so i think the experience as a student personal officer i mean that the very word itself was very interesting student yes. personal officer <laughs> i i keep telling my wife who's also a school teacher here and uh, a lot of times uh, i kind of express this idea that this is one of the best things a school can yes. do in terms of an all rounded education i mean you know we all study our syllabus but <laughs> the point is that there are other things which uh, especially in the 9th and 10th and, and ashok this was the leadership syllabus it was a leadership syllabus without this being was, told yes not, without being told yes. we were learning team building we were le- learning right. leadership we were learning how to do things right how to walk the talk yeah, exactly and you know and it also gave you um, the uh, the i am not I, I, i don't get the right word immediately but to be on the other side of the table absolutely and, 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 and and take a decision as to how you're going to punish the guy. Yes. I mean, if I were to use the word punish, See, we were the law enforcement guys in the school. Exactly. I the remember. Entire, hmm. I remember uh, Ashish Pandya, hmm. right? Hmm. Uh, if you remember, people uh, who would take uh, who were absent from school had to get a note on their from their yes, parents in their, in their prospectus. prospectus, and it had to be first signed by the SPO. Yes. Yes. Correct. And you gave them slips to enter the class. Exactly. And. Um, Ashish uh, made the mistake of net not getting it. Okay, so he came and said, "Hey, you know what, Ashok? I don't have it. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. He was absent the previous day." I looked at him and said, "You know what? I'm sorry, but you have to write 500 lines that I will not avoid. I will not miss getting." A... <laughs> wonderful, he, wonderful. He looked at me. I don't know whether he appealed to you, but um, well, Ashish being a good guy, he finally turned. No, no, he didn't hand. appeal to me. Ashish, of course. <laughs> Law yeah, abiding person. He, he turned in his 500 lines of "I will not forget to get my parents' prospectus signed." Prospectus signed. Yeah. Yeah. So this uh, this was something which was very interesting. Uh, it gave us, like you said, leadership. It gave us uh, organization skills, right? Uh, And to be yeah. fair, always. Yes, to be fair. To have yeah. no favorites. See, this is what I tell my students also that I have no favorites. Everybody is my favorite. I love each one equally. Right, and it also brought a sense of responsibility. Yes, me. and especially uh, I remember when we we were on the rounds outside during the first first break or lunch time. Second break and, bef- yeah, second before second the break. assembly, after the assembly. Correct, and then uh, junior school kids would kind of come running to you like you know you need to arbitrate some fight or something or the other. Uh-huh. Suddenly, like okay. Let me hear you, and you know, Bhaiya, ye humko ye bola. Humko ye bola. Bola, teri pant gandi hai. <laughs> right. So it was. Tiffin kha gaya. All That kinds of stuff. It was very yeah, interesting so, also. So in school, this was, I think, one of the other things which uh, was a real uh, major impact in life because we carried that learning forward in terms of team. I I would say that. Uh, if i have been successful in building my teams uh, as through my 34 years at uh, work uh, spos uh, experiences and teaching have certainly helped me somewhere to a lot quietly in the back end yeah so what about class cleaning ashok we cleaned our own classroom yeah, yes that was another thing which our school taught us right dignity of labor yes right each one of all of us were involved i mean i think right from uh, if i remember from fifth standard we were doing it absolutely from 5th standard every class had to maintain clean their, their own class yes and we would what divide our classes according to the cleaning road. crew so cleaning crew. crew and uh, and cleaning would, bell and, right and spo would conduct uh, uh, inspection and yes the uh, award the best clean best cleaned class of the of the week every and, week uh, we right? gave them a banner Correct. We used to give a banner and all that, right? I mean, it was so much fun actually. If you yes. really look at it, and it's a very bargain, good system. Yes, I think in the bargain, what it certainly taught and teaches is uh, dignity of labor, right? Up for you, you had to take the jhadu and do the jhadu. See, even right? today I in one of my classrooms, and, uh, yes, uh, get your knees dirty, get your hands get your dirty, dirty, get your hands dirty. and then take pride in what you did. Yes, yes. At the end of it, that's what it is, and I think uh, you know. Late, later point in life when i look around and see that is the unfortunate thing which broadly a lot of people miss out is uh, and it's very true in our country is that 
we do not respect labor which is most unfortunate you know and if you are not willing to clean your own dirt right then you things will remain dirty exactly exactly and uh, respecting labor is something which i think is very important because you know uh, they whoever does whatever you know whatever be the kind of labor you do uh, you got to respect you got to respect it because you and you got to be ready for anything exactly you, know, you should not ever think uh, this is be- below me or below me that's it that is one thing which certainly so this class this class cleaning thing uh, you know was something which uh, was the other thing which really taught us yes and, uh, and school life was very exciting i i was in in the scouts right yeah that was another very exciting time. that was another very exciting uh, time um, uh then uh, astronomy club yes of course i was part of the astronomy club uh, shush uh, shaganto mukherjee was our president and uh, i i got uh, uh, i got to be his, his sidekick as vice president and uh, wow. uh, it was fun time right and uh, we spending had spending nights on the terrace yeah we i think over uh, uh, we had wonderful equipment at the school yes good telescope uh, reflect reflective as well as a refractive telescope and um, i remember uh, uh, yeah that's when i got my hands dirty also we had some problem with the telescope and i actually took father robert's permission took it home actually dismantled the dark god and then uh, figured out that um, uh, there was a problem with the lens because it was a compound lens and um, there was an air gap which had got misaligned because one side oh. stand off had gone away so you know i figured that out put everything back and the telescope was like working back again without budding any engineer of... budding engineer early in um, life yeah i don't i don't know i mean you know uh, i yes I that like was a good thing and dirty so to say yes yeah very well, and, wonderful yes yeah, so and, and we've what we've done uh, very interesting things we tracked comets we looked at asteroid uh, showers we we even tried to uh, we didn't photograph that but i think we um, shukanto had the uh, thing got organized for the transit of mercury across the sun surface so we had observed that uh, during during the daytime with our telescopes so it was good fun it was a lot of uh, interesting s- s- severely oriented to science kind of uh, background yeah so all these things um, like i said uh, have played a major role and of course uh, the kind of bonding that we come out from that school just shows that uh, Uh, in our whatsapp group i think how many are we i think almost close to 60 out of the 80 plus uh True. students in the group hmm. from the guys who passed out right so yes. everybody has gone back to roots and it's good to be again connected connected yeah so ashok tell me a little more see you uh, uh, done your electronics and communications engineering from a very very reputed institution the rv college of engineering bangalore and uh, you've been working in the engineering industry for the past 34 years and uh, for the past i think 15 20 years at least at very senior positions so could you tell us a little more about the kind of work you do and the journey that you've been through uh, certainly i mean uh, engineering and being uh, on the Sporting front <coughs> has always was always something which is very exciting. Of course, I also went through uh, basic ex- uh, existential crisis, so to say, at the beginning of my career, right? which mm-hmm. I think just about all students also fall into that trap for a moment. Tell us a little more about that also. Yeah, that's that that's important. I think I would like to uh, talk sure, about sure, please. <laughs> so uh, yes, I did my uh, engineering, did my electronics uh, BE from RV College, uh, Bangalore University, and um, uh, of course today RV College is a very prestigious college. Uh, but in those days, uh, unfortunately, things were not so uh, hunky dorky. So it it was uh, it was a point in time when Bangalore University itself was kind of Uh, going through its own convulsions, and at the time point in time when we uh, graduated, you know, mm-hmm. university had made uh, so many changes in the uh, curriculum. The courses were being conducted, so we had semester scheme, revised semester scheme, re-revised mm-hmm. semester scheme. Oh my God! 
and and finally we were the first batch of the annual scheme so so a real <laughs> churn you went through a real churn a huge churn that we went through and then uh, for See one of the things, especially for that year in India, that you know, worse, probably worse now is the fact that we have a huge population, so the numbers are very large. So when this churn was taking place uh, at the time, uh, two batches of engineering students were going to come out from the university. Okay, so you know the consternation that all of us had was, is the marketplace going to have space for so many engineers? Right. Yes, very pertinent point. Right. Actually, if you take a look at it, that's one of the challenges for today's uh, kids. I see. Uh, I think a, a report because was, of the COVID situation, this is a work. huge challenge. It's a very big challenge. Even otherwise, without COVID, uh, India. Uh, there was a report I was reading which said that I think close to 15 lakh engineers graduate every year. Hmm. Close to that. Close 15 lakh engineers finding jobs for 15 lakh engineers as engineers. It's very a very big challenge, right? So therefore, uh, you know, from that perspective, as a student, uh, and what you want to do, you you really it goes back to Father Roberts. You decide what you want. And uh, so that there is you... why that is why see there are so many engineers. The management schools, especially the uh, third tier, I would say, uh, third tier, yeah. Um, Lowest rungs of the second tier and the third tier and below, they are running mostly on engineering students deciding to do management. I see. <clears throat> Saying that I am not getting a job after engineering for a better future. I interview so many of them, and this is what they reply when I ask them. So they say that when we get into management, we have some kind of an assurance that we might land a job. Yeah. I think one of the uh, thing which uh, You know, at 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 that point in time when we were uh, gra graduating from school and wanting to go forward to do something else, the choices were much less. I mean, you honestly, you had three choices, right? You either became an engineer, you became a doctor, or you get into accounting and you know do your CA. And, and most of the time, it was only two choices: you yes, go for medicine or choice. engineering. Exactly. I mean, you know, Lalla School. Um, Uh, was famous for having lot of guys joining IITs. I mean, we used to have our own internal coaching classes, which used yes. to be used. I remember, um, and then a uh, whole bunch of them would. Uh, uh, th that was when we had senior Cambridge, right? So senior Cambridge students would have their coaching class. They would take the exam and be in IIT. IIT. And uh, and the other lot who wanted to do medicine, well, they all they all left outside to go to other cities and do medicine. Uh, it changed for us uh, because we had to do plus two before we could think of doing uh, uh, IITs. And But, did you do plus two? I did my PUC. Oh uh, yeah, I mean yeah. Again, our education system has been playing havoc. Because with we were at the fulcrum. Yes, exactly. So uh, uh, I I I went to Nagpur to do. It was it was SFS SFS college correct. SFS College, myself, Ashish Pandya, Ashish Pandya, uh, Jaydeep, uh, Sharad Vishwakarma. We were, uh, we were together. Among, together, all of us went there, okay. right? And um, so, and subsequently, I think the following years, uh, a bigger chunk of uh, students followed from. Uh, um, so uh, yeah, I we were talking about the fact that you know I got into engineering, okay, and uh, so we had this thing about. two groups coming out at the same point in time and that was going to be challenging and uh, in in terms of you know uh, you know everybody in life has something which does not work for him very well and you know probably triggers something it happened to me also uh, unfortunately in the year that i was taking my final exams just a month about a month before that my father unfortunately suffered a cardiac uh, arrest and you know I had to kind of rush back, rush to Jamshedpur from Bangalore, spend some two weeks there. My, you know, it it kind of went back, derailed everything. Yeah, and that is uh, very unfortunate. Uh, unfortunately, that took its toll, and it so happened that um, I dropped one paper. Now I had to, you know, uh, take a some supplementary exam for that paper. But given the overall situation, which said that you know so many people coming out. this became a challenge because now my record gets blemished you know it's not unlevel yeah, yeah you you have a back paper 
and unfortunately at that point in time bangalore university was also kind of going through its own convulsions right convulsions because there would be advertisements in the newspaper those days we used to get job ads in the papers which we don't tend to see today nowadays it very clearly used to say bangalore university students need not apply hmm so when the first job came you know i i was going to um, an organization near my place in bangalore um with the idea that i wanted to learn something in um, uh, graphics computer graphics and uh, when i, I so <clears throat> we knew somebody there and uh, they said agya come along we don't normally do this but you can uh, join here and uh, spend some time to learn uh, then uh, i came to know that uh, the company is also looking for uh, hiring someone so i promptly said okay with all the situation here something is landing on my table so i went in and said you know can i apply for this job now mind you i didn't know what the job was <laughs> okay and he said yes uh, sure you can um, sit down uh, let's speak to you he spoke to me for about half an hour and then he said if you're willing to be able to travel and sell things we are going to we need a new uh, engineer to sell components electronic components see a show guys stop you for a second here and this is what is happening even today all my students who come here after engineering and who get into management and who specialize and go out 90% of them are going to be in sales jobs yeah <clears throat> that's an interesting situation and uh, uh, unfortunately we i i am still a sales guy <laughs> yeah fortunately uh, and we are all sales persons At, at the end of whether it, we realize it or not everybody from the chaprasi to the chairman exactly. everyone's a sales person at the end of it that's what it is that's true <clears throat> so i got into this and i say and you know what uh, i didn't even think twice because that was the situation and i got a princely salary of 1300 rupees those days and i said i'm i'm taking it so which year was this the situation of getting a job was challenge which, which year was this uh, 1985 1985 yeah and yeah. i am very sure 1300 used to be a comfortable sum for you to take care of your expenses as an as an as a as a bachelor as a bachelor in bangalore it was fantastic yes uh, for whatever reason i don't know why but uh, among the L, uh, engineering fraternity uh, i don't know the reason but we electronic engineers were getting the higher salary followed by the mechanical guys and then yeah, because the field was growing the civil guys were the poor lot worst hit worst hit poor guys i mean you know uh, my classmates uh, from civil would get a job at 800 and they would look at us and say what yeah you guys got it at 1300 yeah i was also lucky that way 84 i got my first job as a civil engineer for 1500 a month <laughs> yes, so i was i was elated you know i was very very happy right <laughs> so i took that job and uh, uh i got around to selling i had some very interesting uh, people as bosses uh, from whom i learned a couple of quite a lot of things and uh, but like i said i got in without a thought right i mean i just i just got it yeah just just caught hold of it with both hands ah is yes, there's a job take it because uh, you are not sure yeah that's being very positive about life I don't know whether it was positive because yes, still, it was. Once down the line, I had mm. this uh, very serious doubt: what am I doing? Mm. And I think at, at that point in time, uh, two things happened which really changed a lot of things for me. Mm. One, of course, I you know uh, I took uh, vacation in the summer the, the, in, in December. I came down to Jamshedpur and I spoke to my dad. Mm. I was just talking to him and I said, uh, you know, we were talking about joining Tisco. What is the prospect in Tisco? Hmm. So my dad said, "Yeah, you know, I'll put you through to uh, the IT department." Mr. Janardhan was there. I spent a week with uh, Mr. Janardhan. I knew him very well because we yeah, to... another ex-loyalian, right? Yeah, Jack, ex- Jack, Jack, right? And we and we 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 had done a lot of dramas those yeah. days. Yeah, yeah, he was a theatre oh, aficionado, uh, dramatic uh, guy. Hmm. I spent one week in the department, and he showed me the things, and and he also asked me, "Are you sure you want to be a?" uh computer guy it it guy it guy and uh, i said okay uh, i'll think about it and then i spent one week in the growth shop uh, inside mm. the factory tire uh, electrical electronic maintenance uh, thing mm. 
So I came back uh, two weeks done, and my father said, "Okay, now you have an idea of what uh, what work entails over here." And then he also told me one thing: you can get a job here. That's because by that time my father had already been working for thirty years in Tesco, hmm. right? And uh, so he said, "Look, based on the fact that I've been here for so long, the company has this policy of generations, uh, next generation is uh, encouraged. So you get a job." that's no problem hmm. but if you join you're joining because you know it's like a reflected glory yeah a i spent because of your father's goodwill right so you i spent 30 years that's the goodwill on which you're getting this job you're not getting it to only on your on, merit right so that means you have a obligation to stick around here for you know whatever donkey years hmm. think about that very carefully yeah so i said okay that's a point because you know uh, in a in a steel mill the electronics guys don't really have much scope i mean mm. to be fair mm. in terms of what you can actually do this work is work is different i mean but what you would want to kind yeah, of it like, would be more of the maintenance kind and maintenance installations <laughs> maintenance yeah, so, uh, kind of stuff i kind of thought about that and i said okay mm. that's a point two points uh, my father's words were very important because and then, see he was such a forward thinking person he gave you these two weeks there where you could go hands on and see what you would actually be doing all your life who gets that chance and who gives that chance you get that chance exactly yes. two people get that chance so i got a kind of came back to bangalore and i was kind of mulling over it when another very most interesting incident happened to me as far as my uh, career is concerned uh, it so happened that um, you know we were like i said i was a Salesmen selling co- electronic components to IITs and Bharat Electronics and mm. the Defence Labs and all that. Mm. And uh, one of our principals was a French company, Thompson, and uh, they had an India office. And one gentleman joined that office uh, to, you know, coordinate with represent uh, reps like us. Mm. Uh, I happened to go for a meeting. Uh, This guy was from the French company. He was from a French company, Thompson. But he was okay. So uh, he came to Hyderabad. I went from Hyderabad, Bangalore to Hyderabad to have a meeting at uh, the Defence Lab. And I think that was one of the worst meetings I've ever had in terms of how it kind of uh, uh, went. Uh, starting from the point when I actually met him, he said, "Okay, uh, do you have all the papers?" And I blink. I said, "What? What? What papers are you talking of? Uh, do, you have, do, do you know who are?" all we are meeting what are the appointments what is the subject we are going to discuss have you have copies of the quotes you know yeah this long list of things that i am looking like an idiot in front of me saying oh oh all right no no maybe <laughs> okay and uh, we went in and uh, from there whole day he was absolutely quiet he didn't say anything to me okay uh, we landed up back in bangalore and uh, next morning in the office i get a huge dressing down by this gentleman in front of my boss my boss actually felt sorry for me you know uh, and then he said yeah yeah we will work on it don't worry i i uh, i'll make sure he's he's a good guy he will do things so after this gentleman left my boss were, was actually apologetic he said i'm very sorry uh, that you had to go through this you had to unfortunately go through this uh, um, but take a learning from here uh, because this gentleman is, you know is a good guy you know mm-hmm. in terms of what he does as a sales yeah, he means well so he, he probably mean, he, he means well yeah don't don't um, you know take it otherwise yeah don't take it otherwise but you know a young guy uh, being cashiered like that you know it really hurts me see you That feel rebellious uh, and then uh, so i said all right fine okay i'll take your words sir i'll think about it and i really thought about it and then i said okay let me do this who can play the game hmm all right and then i decided because at that point in time the question was should i continue here or kuch karna chahiye and all that stuff hmm. and then i said okay let's let's two can play this game and then i said okay i'm going to be a good sales all right wow and i think somewhere along that line that uh, this incident really changed your life did the thing and said that okay i'm going to be good at what i do yeah okay and um, that's propelled me no more goof ups yeah no more goof ups you learn yeah you you keep your mind open you learn and then you put your heart and into then, it and then heart and there's soul. no going going back exactly so uh, 
it's also another thing was that you know those days uh, all our self help books we didn't have people like you to tell us a lot of <laughs> <laughs> you know? okay and uh, and one of the things we learned in uh, loyola school was reading we used to yes, read a lot. yes we used to read a lot right and we, we used to read a lot and um, there was one of the books which i was reading um, which also kind of those days management books about how to shape your career and all those things were there right hmm. so i remember reading one book and dale carnegie if you remember uh, dale carnegie how to win friends and influence people that was one of the first books and then and, you know, there was one of these books and you know all these self help books which talked about shaping your career and all there was one thing which once and which talked about have a plan for your career hmm so uh, a couple of our uh, guys uh, friends uh, the roommate i was staying with uh, and um, a few other people in my first job over a beer talking about air as as likhta hai as what do you think and all mm. so you know our conversation somewhere along the line went into this and each one of us though jokingly kind of said that you know this is the way we would look at it 5 years next 5 years 8 years 10 years beautiful yeah and honestly um, that's something which i must say without actually going back and focusing on that we said okay let's divide it into slabs of 5 years or 8 years and after every 8 years your milestone should be this so by the time you are about to retire you should be let's say heading an organization very good and uh, frankly without actually focusing too much on that aspect but that's the way its life has been uh, today as um, as i am as i speak to you i had the operations for a japanese software company here in india zuken right. zuken yeah yes we and do that's that. a prestigious position and yeah you know, tell right. me how is it uh, what all things are you learning now see you work with the french i'm sure you work with the uh, germans with, also i work with the germans i germans worked. now you're working with the japanese yeah, that was interesting yes that's a, yeah uh, so would you like to tell us something about all you know, these uh, uh atul uh, one of the things is like um, i have remained in the technical area of uh, though i i started as a sales person all right um, almost all the work has been technical very technical in nature uh, given mm. the fact that uh, i spent a lot of time as a test and measurement engineer mm. okay making um, those days what was uh, it can't, still continues is uh, low level measurements so uh, a good 17 years of my life as an engineer has been a measurement engineer and it, believe me uh, it is a very difficult proposition to make when i am talking of um, electronic measurements we were making measurement or we were working with a company called keithley hmm. we specialized in making measurements in the nano volt and nan and pico current range so we are saying to measure currents at the range of minus 16 amperes all right it's unimaginable because uh, the charge on an electron is minus 19 electron uh, minus 19 volt uh, charge is minus 9 uh, 10 raised to minus 19 right so <clears throat> that is something which uh, was the area i worked on subsequently we were i was part of a group which worked on gps we were the first people to work in india on gps uh we had a government uh, contract and we were working on that for defense requirements mm-hmm. spent a lot of time uh, on gps technology okay and then uh, moved into software and so in, in over this period of time being a test and measurement engineer at that point in time i still was a salesman also i was still hmm. slightly higher in the rung as terms of you know what responsibilities i had but i was still selling and test and measurement uh, that was probably the time when you visited delhi and we met no that was much uh, that much, was late, later, much that, earlier okay. that was much earlier it is okay. first my first job really okay i haven't changed too many jobs you know i like i said somewhere along the line it fell into my plan so my first job i was there for 8 years my next job i was there for 8 years next job was 11 years so no, that's wonderful that shows your uh, stability yeah uh, it it also helped because uh, there was something i was loving what i did which was and ashok stability has ability as part of it and so that, that shows both the things and the other thing was i loved what i i was doing Excellent. that was very important because that's that what is very important which i learned in all these years is that you know if you you must love what you do 
yes that is very important what you do things come naturally to you you'll enjoy it working hard is a given thing you know we yes. all have to work everywhere hard. you've got like, to work hard working hard but working smart and working with uh, enthusiasm and loving what you are doing loving what you are doing yeah and honestly let me tell you one thing if you do that uh, the other things in life come to you they are not far away whether it is you know uh, uh, your acquaintances people you come to uh, know uh, the salaries or the monies which you will make along the line the kind of lifestyle you would like to be they all kind of follow ashok you have said a very very profound thing this is what i try to tell my students in fact on their orientation day i tell them this that this is the time to look for things that you can give to the world and if you know what to give and if you accumulate all the things that you could give to the world then what you get is already taken care of right you will get everything that you desire but don't go after only getting things go after giving and if you go after giving the get is taken care of and 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 engineering is a very vast field okay so uh one that's also another thing which i uh, i have learned uh when you start off uh, doing whatever you would want to do be honest to yourself evaluate okay. yourself very honestly and decide and 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 take a conscious call as to exactly what you are good at all right um you honestly have to try hard not to let ego come in and say okay look this is what i am good at and work on that because if you work on that like you mentioned other things will follow yes right? they'll all follow they'll always follow right so um one of the things i was, as i mentioned about being in test and measurement for almost 17 years as a fact and also selling at that point in time it taught me to reinvent myself Excellent. from a very simple like i'll give you a simple reason why it taught me uh as a sales person if i were to come to you and i say sir you know i'm going to sell you a very high end um, digital multimeter based on what work you are doing you buy one mm. and you know these things last you a lifetime right that the most measuring instruments last you a lifetime mm. so i've so i've done my sale i've done a, a single sale or a, say a few units to you Hmm. how do i as a sales person trying to meet my targets increase my sale again hmm. right I, if i come back to you you're not going to buy another meter from me so very soon what can happen what will happen is you know there is the market which you work in you would have probably contacted a whole bunch of them okay competition is also there and exhausted you, you you would have had some success hmm. now comes the point is how do i grow because the bosses and the you know the expectation is that yet yeah, every year business will go up you will sell yes. more mm. this is a challenge now and honestly being a test measurement engineer sales engineer taught me how to reinvent myself so how do i go back and say okay atul i have sold you the next what do i sell to you next or who do i sell to next right and i think this has been one of the biggest learnings and talking about learnings um, like we all uh, so how, how did you do that would you like to share with the audience okay hmm. it goes back into being a technologist all right hmm. taking a look and trying to therefore diving deeper into your subject so you know okay as a test and measurement instrument uh, guy um there was a lot of work which uh, we for instance uh, started uh, doing with uh, the department of physics because uh, typically department of physics the kind of experiments they do their measurements are all in based in uh, values right Oh, okay. okay. Then the point was that okay, fine, but uh, is that all the business that you can get? They said okay, there are other people who require to make similar kinds of measurements. So now you start actually applying. See, as an engineer, you spent four years learning how to think. And what sells in the market? No, selling is there is a demand. What is not? Selling is later on. Understanding your product. Uh, no, that is later on. The point is, as an engineer. you train to think to solve a problem absolutely okay. that is the basic that is the basic tenet tenet of engineering so an engineer must think all right and that is very important and when you start thinking you are now thinking solutions so if you are saying okay i spent a lot of time with uh, you know all the department of physics across the country selling them this instruments uh, my next thought is okay 
who else can actually where do i apply this where who do i apply it to and mm. believe you believe me the this this chain of thought is what propelled us to look at other in other places so we figured out uh, and said all right you know what there are connect electrical connector manufacturers who actually require such measurements because one of the parameters that they need <laughs> is, um, you know contact resistance so when you put in a plug into the socket and it's a let's say containing low level signals the contact resistance causes signal degradation right and these measurements have to be done in order to ensure that the so we took this and said okay let's go back into the industry and say okay you have problems one of the problems is contact resistance you can make contact resistance better so you are actually applying yourself and rethinking and reinventing yourself so i show there's a lot of talk these days and there are lots of courses and seminars and things going on on design thinking could you tell us a little more how our students of management engineering and other students how they could engage with this and get to know more about design thinking yeah i mean uh, that, that's a interesting question from a perspective of how things have changed over so many years right um we we uh, you know that also brings up one uh, thing which i learned as part of my work experience uh, like you mentioned i worked with the french the germans and i've had the best of both worlds in the sense that i have spent a lot of i have never really worked outside the country but i keep you know traveling in and out and have engaged with a lot of people across uh, across europe usa and and now japan and one thing it has taught me which is very relevant to your question is the fact that we as a group of community of people we are as good if not better than the rest of the world so first is the self confidence that we should Beautiful. have hey we can do it fully endorse what you are saying right? absolutely and the second thing is now you are that you are trained as an engineer please put on your thinking cap so your uh, your question regarding you know the design process thinking it's it's about taking a problem and then trying to think out a solution all right and <clears throat> that requires you to actually apply your brains seriously now that also brings back to the first question as uh, you know as an engineer you are trained to think so please think and as a team when you work together all right ideas do come forward and your solutions will come if you are a management guy uh, there is two things which i always say hmm. anybody can sit and design anything agreed. but somebody has to manufacture it agreed and then somebody has to sell it sell it all three of these are highly technical in nature and each as important as the other absolutely so now if there is a management guy who understands all the economics of you know actually taking a product and then ensuring that it succeeds in the market yeah, bringing it to market right so he forms an equally important part in the role of product development and design yes. right so and a lot in of in fact your design ideas should start coming they should originate in the market what does the market need true and that's where an engineer who has done a market or a marketing or a management degree has a double advantage He, is, he, he should not certainly, as an engineer, I always say, engineers. If you train to be an engineer, please don't forget your engineering. Absolutely, <laughs> and and be an engineer. Be an engineer. It doesn't matter if you have done uh, finance and accounting, but still be an engineer because you will then be able to get the best out of both the worlds. That's what I try to tell them. Engineer, engineer. Exactly, engineer, engineer it. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so uh, i i would say that uh, you know uh, today's world the opportunities are much higher okay and uh, the uh, the way things have happened for the country also has changed there are uh, the uh, the environment under which you have access to the technologies around the world okay gives you a lot of opportunities to think and be able to succeed within whichever team whichever area that you work in and engineering is a very vast field all right and there are so many problems to solve absolutely 
Ashok, uh, you have a son, Puranjay. Yes. Who's now in Sweden? He's doing his masters. Yeah, he's doing his masters in production. In production engineering. So tell me, Ashok, how has education changed from the time you and I did our engineering to the time when our kids are doing engineering? How has this education changed? Uh, from the point of, you know, I think one of the things that today's children, uh, boys and girls who are doing engineering, uh, from clearly looking at it from the way it is taught and uh, their, uh, uh, their uh, availability of information, that's one of the biggest changes. Uh, we had a lot more difficulty. We, we, I mean, I won't say difficulty. Uh, we did not have the tools which today's children have. We never the had them, so we never needed them. We went to the library. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> but I, 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 I would, I would, I would uh, state one thing. Uh, today, if you do, it's not that so. Sometimes it is not so important to know everything. Correct. Very important to know where to get it from. How to get everything. How to get it right. And this is very. This is. I give you another example here as to you know uh, the difference between the generations, so to say. I, I don't really like to use the word difference. Difference in generations. Uh, there was this uh, project we were doing uh, uh, with the Air Force uh, in Delhi. Okay. And um, because it was an Air Force project, uh, the work which had to be done. Uh, at, it was done being done at uh, the Shubroto Park inside the headquarters, deep inside, mm. and it was a secure area. Mm. All right, so there was this team of software people, okay, from Wipro who were part of that team. Mm. They were all youngsters, okay. Um, <coughs> kind of part out from school, two, three years experience. But when you went in for this project, the challenge, the thing was that you had to A, deposit your phone outside. Mm. All right, you could not take it into the uh, building, hmm. okay. And uh, B, you had no internet, so when you went inside the building, you were totally cut off from the rest cut of the. Cut off from everything. All right. Uh, during one of the what, uh, I was not working in Wipro, but I was handling something else, which was part of this project. So we had this. Uh, the, the, uh, Wipro used to call this town hall meeting. So we we all hmm. got in there for this town hall meeting. This was uh, about uh, the first three months of the project starting. Hmm. And everybody in that hall had this problem about, so we need, we are cut off from the world. We don't have hmm. this phone. We don't know this. We, and then we were all blinking and, um, well, you could, uh, we, if you need some information, I don't know how to get it and stuff hmm. like that. Uh, then I raised my hand and I said, gentlemen, uh, you know, the department still allows you, the FO still allows you to use a landline and call outside. And get help if you require. Uh, did anybody call? <laughs> no. <laughs> so, this is where one of the challenges is. Like you said, we knew how to find it out because we yes. did not have these aids. Yes, we didn't have them. We didn't need them. We didn't know they exi existed or would exist or whatever. Right, but so, whatever we had, we knew how to make use of it. Exactly. So, that is where I keep telling... You, it's not necessary to, at some point in time to have all the information with you, but you should know where to get it from. Yes. Correct? So not having an aid like Google, for instance, does not should not stop you from being able to look for the books, look around, use uh, you know various means of being able to get that data. Right. So and today, so, when more is available, people have less information. Exactly. Actually. The more that's also very true because uh, there is this tendency of you know it's available there so it's when available I, it's I, there uh, it doesn't always work that way I think what you need you need yes. everything else is bells and whistles which will only add value to whatever you're doing so Correct. Uh, yeah, that's that's very important yeah so uh, that that's so this is one way in which uh, you know use technology today to be able to do your thinking processes and do your design process and like I mentioned. Please also evaluate yourself well so that you know your strong point. So if you want to be a good designer, it should be in you. You should be able to visualize, right? That's very important. A designer should be able to visualize. If you can visualize, uh, then you can actually do that much better. Beautiful. 
So Ashok, tell me now we have so many young people going through school, going through college, getting ready to enter the job world. Now, tell me three skills that everybody, regardless of which profession they are going to get into, must develop. Because skills can be developed. You don't need to be born with them. In fact, you're born with some abilities maybe, but skills you develop as you get to do things. So what are the three key skills that anybody wanting to go into any profession, business, entrepreneurship, you know, everybody should have? You know, I think uh, in terms of uh, three skills, I, I would like to kind of compartmentalize them into... Yes, please. Uh, and then one, there may be three bouquets. Right, yeah. Hmm. So uh, one, one uh, compartmentalization I would do is related directly to your job. Okay. Whatever be your job, hmm. all right, it demands certain technical skills. All right. It demands you to use some tools within your workspace. Yeah, hard skills. Right. And hmm. this is very important for you. Hmm. So I have, for instance, I keep, um, you know, telling all my people, you use a computer hmm. every day. Hmm. Right? If you don't know your computer well, I'm not expecting you to be able to design a computer. Hmm. But you should know what your computer is. Hmm. What, what is, how does it, how it works. How it, basically it works. If, you know, how, how do you ensure that you have software running correctly? How do you ensure that you're, you're protected against viruses and all that stuff? What are the good practices? Uh, if you're using PowerPoint, which a lot of people use, please spend the time to understand how to use PowerPoint. For yeah, that it's, it's like, you know, Ashok, driving a car. Like you that. must know how to check the oil, how to, you know, exactly. change a tire. Oh. You should know how the car works, what could be wrong, yeah. change a fuse. All these basics, you've got to know about the machine. So your skill is something which is related to the tools at work for yourself. Beautiful. I have people who use Excel. Excel, everybody uses it. And, you know, honestly, Excel is one of the most powerful spread tools. So can we, can we term it as tool utilization skills? Right, exactly. Whatever is required for you. Perfect. Your that, that's a skill that a everybody, skill. regardless of who they are, what they are going to be, they should know this is something I coined just now, tool utilization skills. Yes, exactly. That's very important. Beautiful. The next one is, uh, you know, you as an individual are uh, there working with other people, interacting with people in the environment around you. And I think one skill which is really more related to human uh, interactions, everybody at the end of the day, you know, would want to be treated in a particular way, right? And here is something which I always tell people. Please treat, first and foremost, have respect for everybody around you because he or she brings in, uh, you know, certain value, right? And not That's just right. people... And for animals, flora, fauna, environment, for everything. So please treat everybody around you in the same way. Everything around you, you. Yes. That's very important. Absolutely. Okay. So respect for everything around you, including yes. the fact that we discussed earlier that yes. you know, um, dignity of labor and respect. Yes, yes. Very, right? very important. This is, a, this is a skill, actually. Yes, a, it is. It's really a skill. And I, it's a point of view. It's, it's how a, you view the world. Exactly. So, uh, and honestly, some people are very skilled at how they interact with people, right? I have Great a, people I, skills. I they have, call I it. have a sales manager who is amazing in terms of how he is able to communicate with guys all around. Yes. Yeah? For the love of me, I can never do it. I know that. <laughs> okay. So if I have to break ice with my customers, sometimes I pull him along. Say, Come on, you are you are the guy who is fantastic yeah. at this. He's got those skills. Right. He's got those. them. So. Uh, and this is not something which people can teach. It, it's it's similar to like going to a drawing class and learning all about trading and all. O only but, life can teach you. Yeah, only life. These are things. And if you want to learn, because life teaches you every day, but we don't want to learn. Yeah, that's true. So you have to learning. Okay. Since you brought up learning, learning never ends. Okay. Absolutely. Learning just about never ends. Lifelong so, learning. 
there is a you know, from a from a corporate mantra i think this our is a, panelists are very happy with your tips ashok <laughs> i hope i'm uh, all yeah. right everyone in the audience you can shoot your questions in the chat box and then we'll ask ashok those questions <laughs> i'm getting into trouble uh, but you know in, in from a corporate world and and, and we're talking about skills there is one a very important uh, thing which i have learned which i would mm. like to share you know all of us put in our efforts uh, in different fashions in different capabilities of assimilating things interacting and moving forward and being successful mm. however in life one thing is there especially in what you do you will rise to the level of your incompetence mm. mark this very carefully beautiful you will always rise to the level of your incompetence so the challenge for everybody is try not to be incompetent whatever yes. you do to to keep improving to your competence at some point in time i know i'm going to become incompetent and that's when you stop growing so some people decide that uh, you know that's why i said learning never ends if you for any reason decide that i know it all that's it that's it you've risen enough yes you have risen enough right so and challenge yourself that so that's what i find in 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 the, in the corporate world is that you will rise to the level of your incompetence right yes. and that is and then the, remain there that's it so that's a, that's the that's the other part of the skill which really comes in sense the third skill really is how do you make sure that you are assimilating and keeping yourself competent and how do you unlearn relearn and, and continue uh, to learn Yeah, and and reinvent yourself. Reinvent yourself. It's the most important thing is. And there's it doesn't matter what you have studied in school or college. True. There's everything can be learned. Yes. You know, without going yeah, to a school yeah, or college, we have yeah. so much available now. True. That everything can be learned. Certainly, today's uh, in in today's world, uh, the opportunities are very high. Yes. Um, we can shake off that old. Uh, Uh, you know thought process that you can only be an engineer doctor or a chartered accountant there are so many other things that you can do absolutely successful absolutely follow, follow what you would want to do yes But, uh, you know a case uh, an example is i have a classmate of mine from engineering a brilliant fellow mm -hmm. all right i mean he has done some phenomenal work uh, in uh, wireless technologies and one fine day he said you know what actually i love and he was uh, fantastic with books and uh, he really loved books okay so one fine day he said you know i what i really want to do is to be able to take books to children so he actually gave up his uh, great corporate job and he found great enjoyment in actually running a program for library school libraries uh, for government school in, in bangalore wow right and fabulous i mean you know uh, that eventually he he's probably made, if you talk of money he's made more money doing that than what he was doing it as 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 an engineer and that's what he's doing even now uh, no now he's uh, he's my age so he's kind of like you he's decided to kind of uh, be a professor and teach people and uh, help you know take these ideas forward and you know get other youngsters to actually run around and Uh, you know, if, uh, get enthused with such kind of activities. Okay, now Ashok, there's a very interesting question from Taukir. Taukir is doing marketing in pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. So he's a pharmaceutical product seller. He needs some tips how to convince prescribers. How to convince a prescriber? A doctor, a doctor, a pharmacist. I think Farooq Siraj would answer that I better. I think he would be the best. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, <laughs> uh, I will have to. Uh, unfortunately, um, a pharmacist is uh, a bit out of my scope. Okay, in terms of you know the finer nuances. Uh, other than that, uh, you know, my my the 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 point is like this. <clears throat> in order to be able to convince anybody first convince yourself about what you're selling that's the most important thing all right uh, if you are not convinced of what you're selling uh, what have you whatever you do i mean you'll have this uh, uh, 20 questions to ask ask and uh, get answers 
uh, you'll have a whole bunch of written things which you would go and kind of, you know, add verbatim, just repeat it. That's not going to get him, right? A prescriber as a doctor, I would say. Sir, yeah, Paruk, that's it. Uh, prescribers are doctors. Right. So, you know, Paruk, <laughs> like you said, is the best person because he we would and, have... And, and we'll yeah. have Farooq next time. So, Taukir should wait for Farooq's yeah, but, but broadly, conversation and uh, we'll ask Farooq the same question. Yeah, that is getting into the subject of it. Uh, from the doctor's uh, perspective. But uh, otherwise, as a marketing guy, as in the sales guy, what is very important is if you want to really be able to do and get this message across, you can, you should be convinced yourself. If I am not at all convinced about what I am selling myself, that it is the best and the only product in the world which can solve whatever it's trying to do, there's no way in which I'm going to be able to convince the other guy. That's point one. Second point, of course, I'm not sure whether it applies directly in case of pharmaceuticals, but please remember that uh, never ever play down or uh, downgrade your uh, competition. Don't ever bad mouth them. Beautiful. Excellent. Never, never ever do that. Yeah. Because uh, tomorrow you might actually change your job and you might be selling that product. Yes. Foot in the mouth. Correct. And then you land up with the same customer and that guy is going to say, uh, uh, I don't think I'm going to trust. So sell on your strengths. Right. You you just, uh, you know, a couple of months back were bad mouthing these guys and you're with these guys. <laughs> so that's never do that. Right. That happens to a lot of politicians when they change parties. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So that's what happens. So Ashok, uh, as we come to the end of this uh, conversation, I would now like to request you to give one strong message for our youth. You know, what would be that one message that you would like to give to our students, to our youth? It can be about life. It can be about anything that you feel strongly about. You know, uh, it's all about your confidence. You should be confident about what... That's why I said, do an honest evaluation of yourself so that you know your strengths. Work on your strengths. Beautiful. And if you work on your strengths, weaknesses will go away. And you, wow. I don't call it weaknesses. I, I, I would call it areas which would require some rework. Right? Okay. So work on your strengths. Have a very positive attitude. Treat everybody the way you would want them to treat you. Okay? And you will succeed. Profound. And, and, and please remember, success, don't measure success by the type of amount of money. No, no, don't. The don't car you drive. Don't try to measure success by the car you drive. Okay, the model of car you drive. Please don't do that. Hmm. Yeah, uh, that would be a wrong way to look at it. And you are a test and measurements guy, so you know exactly. <laughs> Reinvent. <laughs> Reinvent. <laughs> yeah, and you know, honestly, the other thing, personally, I, I have been very happy and um, lucky is that I've always worked with young people. That's yeah, that's very important. That's one of uh, the best things which, uh, I, when I look back and say. Uh, I, I, I do that a lot. I, you know, the, the very fact that I work with, <clears throat> you know, in my current office, um, I'm really a Buddha. The average age in my office is 32. Very nice. <laughs> right? Excellent. Yeah. And, um, and who says you're a Buddha? You're so young, Ashok. Uh, it's, it's the crowd which keeps you, the environment. Yes, there. it does. You see, uh, the youth today is actually very good. Uh, one. This, just one last thing which I would like to point out about this aspect of why I love the youth, the way, the energy that they have. <clears throat> you know, uh, in the engineering uh, school fraternity in, in, that, in that space, uh, over the last couple of years, all engineering schools have been participating in what is called as, uh, uh, you know, Formula Bharat. Uh, it's an um, engineering uh, student F1 racing uh, event. The schools mm. uh, across the country have mm. teams building their own racing car. Mm. Mm. Okay. I know, I know. Right. I've seen my students do it too. Right. So uh, we, uh, at my company, uh, currently we support uh, and sponsor these uh, student uh, teams. And I have interacted with a lot of teams over the last couple of years. And the energy and the ideas which they have are phenomenal. You know, that gives me a lot of enthusiasm and hope as we go forward. The youth really have some fantastic ideas and they're willing to dirty their hands and do it. Yes, it does. Right? I fully agree with you, Ashok. 
yeah and that is that is what is really great about encouraging and very encouraging it's really encouraging. encouraging so now don't lose hope there is no no not at all and ashok Fantastic. if our youth is not able to do something well or if they fail somewhere you know for all their failures somewhere we are responsible exactly for all their problems somewhere we are responsible true so we only need to encourage them give them hope equip them with the best things that we have and continue to share whatever we have with them that's right that's good that's right so ashok as we come to the end of this conversation let me tell you it's been a huge 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 pleasure having you here my friend thank you atul uh, it's always and and whatever you shared i'm very sure it's going to go a very long way with our audience and it's going to be there on facebook youtube etc for people to view and watch and even later if people want to get in touch they can always send in their questions and sure. next week we are going to have another guest and uh, uh, from the audience side and from my side i extend you know my Thank you very much to you Ashok thank you very thank much for joining us and sharing and uh, finding time for us very nice talk uh, always yeah sir. same here my friend and uh, uh i would also like to you know uh, extend my love to puranjay and give my regards to rajeshri thank you so god bless you ashok you and your family You have a lot of members of the audience thank you very much for uh, having joined us 